Dear crypto family, welcome back to Kryptonize TV, a special edition on the battle of the blockchains that favors facts and research over opinions and politics, fundamental analysis over technical analysis, and more importantly, sustainable wealth management rather than crazy pump and dumps. We're going to do episode two of the Battle of the Blockchains. And for those who missed episode one, there's a link here above. It's a critical show to understand the difference between layer zero protocols, layer one blockchains, or layer two scaling solutions. The basis of everything with regards to whether I want to buy, hold, and earn interest on blockchain coins and tokens. And today, rather than talking about all the political side and drama, such as I'm the coolest, sexiest, fastest blockchain in the world, we're only going to focus on on-chain statistics and facts based on adoption. Because you could have the best burgers in town, but if no customers are coming to buy your burgers, the business is worthless. So adoption is key, and so we're gonna deep dive into that. And before we kick off, for everyone to understand, this is not financial advice. I have my biases, you should only trust yourself and make sure that you see this only as edutainment and making all the decisions based on your research. Ready guys? Part two of the Battle of the Blockchains. Okay guys, so without further ado, let's have a look at some of the most important criteria to really understanding the fundamentals, blockchain adoption, which matters much more than sexy words on websites. So first off, if it is a layer zero protocol, and if you've watched the previous episode, you have to measure what are the blockchain projects building on top of it. So for example, Polkadot layer zero has Moonbeam, Moonriver. Those are two quality projects that built on top of the layer zero protocol. But not only that, what are the dApps or decentralized apps that are building on top of the layer one blockchains? How many of those dApps? How many users do they have, et cetera, et cetera, to really scale that and understand if people actually want to build on top of their ecosystems. Number two, we have the number of transactions. And it's very important to not just compare daily transactions, but look at transactions on a monthly basis, yearly basis, and also compare them month on month, year on year, to understand if the amount of transactions are going up and growing, if they're stalling or even going down, which is showing that there's the blockchain is losing hype and trend and interest from the engineers and the devs. Number three, the TVL, total value locked. This really shows how much people trust the security of the blockchain, how many advantages there are putting their wealth on that blockchain. So it's a very critical metric. Number four, transactions per seconds in fees. And we'll have a look at what can be misleading. There is a lot of misleading information with regards to transactions per second, but it's also important to understand the fees because as they grow, are they managing to keep the same speed as they initially promised? Are they imagining to ramp up that speed with scalability solutions? And what are the fees looking like? It's cool to have one cent per transaction, but as soon as you have, have adoption, then all of a sudden it pops to $1, to $5, to $10, and all of a sudden the blockchain loses its purpose, which is to create an open and inclusive financial ecosystem. And then next up, we have number five. What are the percentage of token supply staked? So how many people believe so much in the future of the blockchain that they're willing to put their tokens and stake them there and not use them and to earn interest because they like the long-term vision? That is a very critical metric. And again, criteria to evaluating what are the best blockchains as of today in the top 20 by market cap. And then we have market cap relative to Ethereum. We know Ethereum is the motherboard of all decentralized blockchains. And it's important to understand what is the upside that we can potentially gain relative to number one. Always relative. It's really important that all of these metrics, numbers, and facts are relative to something or else they have very little value and start becoming biases or opinions. Next up, we have proof of stake APY and yields. How much is the API that APY, sorry, that you can earn on each of these block block? Next up is proof of stake APY yields. So while you're staking these tokens, 
what are the digits you can earn in terms of passive income by using proof of stake. So is it a single digit, is it a double digit? And that is also a very important criteria to understand when deciding which blockchain coin token is best for you. And last but not least, and I've never seen this on any other YouTube video, and actually a lot of these facts and figures are not shown on any other YouTube videos, but it's important to understand the inflation rate. What is the percentage of inflation and what is the amount of tokens that's being dropped to increase the total supply that may affect also the price of the token in the long term? You know, a lot of Bitcoin maxis are always complaining about how Bitcoin is the only coin or token that has real scarcity, absolute scarcity, as in you cannot increase the, you cannot create any type of inflation over the 51 million. This is something that some blockchains need to look into as well while evaluating your favorite projects. So let's have a look at the battle of the top 20 blockchain by market cap. Here guys is the typical criteria and the typical comparison table that you'll see on the net, which does not necessarily reflect the truth. And there's a lot of biases, there's a lot of fake news. So let's have a look at this more precisely. So we looked at transactions per second, which is the very first row here when comparing some of the biggest blockchains in the space. And you can see here 65,000 for Solana, 100,000 hopefully on Ethereum 2.0, uh, 4,500 on Avalanche, 10,000 on Phantom. Let me just really clarify one thing, guys. The promise in terms of transactions per second is not necessarily true because a lot of these actual speeds and transactions per second are calculated on test nets when there's basically zero traffic or very early stage mainnet. But then the problem is, is that actual people start using the chain, it becomes more and more congested. And as you, you have more and more traffic on your highway, as we talked about in the previous video, the slower it becomes. These transactions per second that they promise in white papers or on websites is like having a Ferrari in the middle of a Nevada deserted road and you going full speed, no cars, empty roads, full speed. It doesn't count on having multiple cars, traffic lights and other things that happen eventually. So for instance, Solana promising 65,000 transactions per second as of today and over the course of the past week and past months, day on day, they never go above 4,500 transactions per second. But 4,500 transactions per second is actually very fast. When you have people using the network, it's still the fastest, uh, fastest of all chains. So it is something to take into consideration. Block times, we don't really care so much about this. Transaction fee, we do. As you guys can see here, relative to Bitcoin and Ethereum, which have double digits, so $26, $12, you guys know that Ethereum, because of OpenSea in the past months had days where a simple transaction was 60, 70, 80, even triple digit, $100. So it's really victim to its success, as we we're talking about earlier, compromising these fees and really hurting that ability to create a new inclusive financial era. So here, uh, most of these are single digit cents, which is fantastic. We have double digits with Cardano. This gives you relative, of course, these are not guaranteed in fixed rates. They fluctuate based on traffic once again. The validators part is understanding how decentralized the chain is. These are not up to date, by the way. These, all these statistics, guys, are based on research in December 2021, about three months old. But numbers haven't really changed that much since, right? And a lot of these chains, for instance, they may have triple digit validator nodes. And a lot of people are saying they're not decentralized enough, but they're working their way toward decentralization. So that's a key thing to understand here. And then all of the other things we, we can see layer one, layer zero, etc. Um, and they have sharding for Polkadot, so this is not necessarily accurate either. But this is something that we really need to pay attention to. And then there's a second table that we can have a look at with regards to how to evaluate uh, the different type of blockchains. The whole first gen, second gen, third gen. Yeah, that, that's a bit subjective. Like what makes you a second gen or third gen? A lot of people debate this online. I do not think that this is critical because it's not really measurable as of today. Um, but then we can see some of the similar statistics that we saw earlier um, that really give us just a general idea, but not necessarily a very accurate point of view on which blockchain is doing better. So let's look at more relevant and more accurate figures as of yesterday. Now, first, before we look into that, 
let's have a look at some of the fundamental steps you can take when it comes to evaluating a blockchain. Number one is really guys, use the chain. That is just like going to McDonald's and buying a hamburger, trying it out, looking at the parking lot if it's filled or not, and then go to another chain, another McDonald's chain to see if the burger's quality is consistent, right? If you really feel like the UI, the UX, the speed, everything is ready for mass adoption. So using the chain, there's nothing better. And even using the dApps or other chains on top of the chain, if it's a layer zero, is really the fundamental step of doing your research. White paper, technology, the governance systems, you have Reddit, tons of forums, you can find that. Again, it's not really quantifiable at all times, so we won't focus too much on that. On-chain statistics, number three, the most critical of all, and that's what we're focusing on today. And then of course, what is the community like? Do you feel like you can become friends? Do you like the philosophy, the principles, the values? Does it relate to you as a human being is a critical point because when you believe with your heart and also your brain, regardless of what the market does, you will see the future and you will be able to keep your emotional stability. So those are great things here. Now, let's have a look at column number five here, right? If you look on the other five, uh, column number five, we have stake value, sorry, column number four. So let's look at that column number four. We see the rewards for staking the tokens. For instance, right? We see here that out of all these tokens, Cosmos, Polygon and Polkadot are offering double digit APY for staking those tokens. So that could be very interesting, right? And then if we look at the market cap actual column, here we can see, okay, what is their market cap relative to Ethereum? Ethereum has $360 billion of a market cap. So you know that Terra is still one tenth of that. And then Solana is even lower, Cardano even lower, Avalanche even lower. Again, these statistics are based on last week's screenshots, so they may have changed slightly as of today, but still it gives you guys a really relevant picture. So here you can see Cosmos, it has 9 billion, which is very low relative to Ethereum and has double digit, digit returns, uh, but also Polkadot as well. It's very low relative to Ethereum and it has double digit returns for proof of stake. So these are some key metrics that you can look at. And the last column that we saw on the previous page is total token staked. 75% of all Solana Sol tokens are staked. Again, going back previously to understanding that people really believe in the future of Solana and that they're willing to stake their tokens uh, because they believe it is a promising project. So that is very critical. We can see that Ethereum uh, has only 7.9% because still we have no real deadline on whether when ETH 2.0 is gonna happen, right? There's no clarity there. So maybe people, people are a little bit more skeptical to seeing these things. And then uh, we can look at Polkadot, which has 54%, BNB chain 84.7%. That is a lot of people staking that really believe again and the long-term vision of Binance and the Binance Smart Chain. Next up. Okay guys, so this is probably one of the most important criteria and on-chain statistics to look at with regards to evaluating different blockchain coins and tokens and figuring out which investment is the most sound to you. So let's have a look at the far left here. And as you guys can see here again, once again, we're not looking just at the daily, but it should be day on day, month on month, year on year, relative to what was happening before to see if there's growth, if it's flat or if the actual figures are going down. Far left, Avalanche Sea Chain. Guys, look at this. The year on year growth in terms of usage of the chain for Avalanche is insane. We have its peak just last month, February 2022, that reached 1,000 thousand transactions, which essentially means 1 million transactions in a single day. That is a lot of transactions with regards to such a little period of time and insane growth, exponential growth. If you compare that, for instance, with down here, we have Polkadot. Polkadot is still roughly around 20,000, between 15 to 20,000 transactions a day. So still in its infancy stages and probably the reason why uh, the price hasn't gone up significantly despite having some really cool projects built on them. We still need to see Polkadot scale and have more usage, on-chain usage, which is absolutely critical. Then here on the far right, we can have a look at Cosmos. So Cosmos here, again, we have transactions on a daily basis. It's averaging you know, anywhere between 60 to 70, 75,000 on peak days, maybe 80,000 transactions uh, in the past month. 
And this has been pretty much stable um, for if we look year on year as well. So decent transaction uh, rate relative to Polkadot, but still not at the level of Avalanche. Here uh, is the mother of all mothers. We can see Ethereum, right? So Ethereum as well was reaching over a million transactions a day. So, and actually close to 1.5 million transactions a day. So even Ethereum, and we're looking at data that goes all the way back to 2015, bringing us all the way up to today. Avalanche came very close to Ethereum's peak, which is quite incredible in this short amount of time, right? And definitely shows that Ethereum went through exponential growth. And now, you know, for the past year has been stalling and has been losing a bit of its market share uh, relative to the other proof of stake chains that have been launching their public and mainnets. Uh, here we can see Binance Smart Chain, which surpassed Ethereum. Once again, we saw in the previous video about layer 0, 1, 2 protocols that Binance Smart Chain compromised on decentralization to focus on speed and, co and a cost-effective approach. And because of that, and because it's an Ethereum-compatible chain, the amount of transactions a day are insane, guys. We're looking at 4.9 million transactions a day on March 16, 2022. Uh, the day before, I had 5 million transactions a day. Uh, and this is just really crazy. At its peak, it hit 16 million transactions <laughs> in a single day, which was in Q4 2021. So... Yeah, really, Binance Smart Chain, despite being criticized, I mean, in terms of on-chain statistics and adoption, that says it all, guys. That says it all. Last but not least, let's have a look at Polygon, which is a layer two scaling solution. You can see here that once again, Polygon was actually very useful for Ethereum because at the peak, it was going over 8 million transactions per day. I mean, that is incredible. It's more than any other chain. So it shows really that a layer two solution, a scaling solution or a side chain, as we talked about in the previous video, is very useful. Now, there is one issue is that the reason why Polygon had so many daily transactions back when it hit its peak in 2021 is because there weren't as many proof of stake chains. There weren't as many options. It was either Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain or Polygon. Now that there are more options, we can see definitely the transactions that are dropping and are probably migrating to other chains as well. However, Polygon has announced recently a new scaling solution that should further help with efficiency, make the bridges and all the tools a lot more user friendly. So let's see where this goes. But still, as of today, we're still looking at millions of transactions through Polygon. So there's definitely still usage, despite the fact that the chart looks a little bit bearish or going downhill. So hopefully this was helpful. Once again, guys, we saw the total value locked, which shows trust. And here we saw we see the actual usage, which is critical, critical information. All right, guys, next up, something that's critically important that has very little coverage on YouTube is asking ourselves whether these blockchain tokens actually have inflationary fixed or deflationary supply. And that is a critical component of tokenomics and something that the Bitcoin maxis tend to be really upset about when looking at the different options. So having a look here, guys, on the top left corner with regards to Solana and its sole token, you can see that the inflation rate is 9.22% on a yearly basis so far, right? And then if we compare this relative to Polygon, we can see that Polygon has an inflation rate of 13.17%, which is higher than Solana. And again, why is this important is because if you keep the inflation rate too high, then you're increasing the supply, which also weakens the buying pressure, right? Because you have more of it, people are less interested. They're like, oh, there's too much inflation relative to what I'm staking. It's not so exciting. So it definitely has an impact, right? It could uh, actually negatively infect the price of a token. So that's why we're looking at this. And then Cardano here has a very low inflation rate of 1.99%, which is very, very low. And by the way, shout out to Misari. All these blockchain on-chain statistics uh, are very easy to find on Misari, specifically the token supply, market cap, amount of value locked. Great website for data, misari.io, shout out. Now, here we, we are talking about trying to keep things really relative to Ethereum at all times, right? Because Ethereum, once again, is the mother, and it's very good to have things relative. Ethereum's inflation rate actually has decreased over time. It was criticized for having high inflation rate by all the Bitcoin maxis, but now has a very low inflation rate 
uh, which is 0.54%, which is quite good relative to what we see above. Now, Avalanche here below, the inflation rate is 23.49%. It's quite high. Um, so again, it's something to consider. We saw that Avalanche has been doing incredibly well. This is probably one of the lower points for Avalanche in this case. We'll look at Terra Luna, which here, according to statistics, has a 1.72% inflation rate. But also, it's very important to understand that the Luna tokens actually get burnt on Terra to mint UST tokens, but they can also get minted if they, they go the other way around. But it's so far, actually, Terra has had a deflationary rate because the total supply has decreased since they've been offering their tokens and their ecosystem with different types of yields and stuff like that. So this is quite exciting, right, guys? Probably the most impressive out of all is BNB. Um, in this case, BNB is definitely the winner because we can see that BNB tokens has had, as of today, I believe 18 or 19 burns. So it's definitely and clearly a deflationary model. But on top of that, the last burn was over $400 million, if I'm correct. I'll look at this later, guys, but they're burning at insane rate. So not only there's no inflation, but on top of that, it's 100% deflationary. So this is quite exciting when you when it comes to evaluating the different blockchain projects and looking specifically at the tokenomics. All right, guys, let's just make sure that we're giving facts and not just random numbers. Here we can confirm the biggest burn up to date on BNB was $640 million of BNB tokens burn, which is absolutely insane. 1.4 million BNB tokens. Oh, that's just absolutely wild. And that was the last burn in October 2021. We can see now that we're at the 18th burn as of January 2022. So again, once in terms of tokenomics, without a single doubt, uh, BNB token is superior to the rest of the blockchains. So let's have a look at the very last factor. And hopefully this is very informative so far. Okay, guys. So we looked at some of the most critical criteria when it comes to evaluating blockchain tokens, right? We looked at total value locked. We looked at transactions per day relative to certain periods of time. We looked at yields, the basics of it. We looked at tokenomics as well. We looked at some of the most important criteria to really evaluate this, but let's dive deeper into the yield part. By the way, guys, if you like this show, please like here below. And if there are other types of videos that you want us to cover in the future, today we're covering top 20 blockchain coins and tokens by market cap. If you want us to do mid cap or you have any specific requests, we will do the research and we will give you facts over opinions and focus on sustainable wealth over crazy pump and dumps that are way too risky and not worth it. Now let's have a look and dive deeper into APY and actual earning interest. Why do you want to earn interest? It's because guys, in the current corrected markets, right? If you can choose an undervalued token, why not choose one that earns interest on top of that? So you can compound the interest, but on top of that, you can actually multiply your gains once we go back into a bull market. So very critical information. Once again, first row here, we have either single or double digit gains. As you guys can see here, Cosmos and Polkadot have double digit gains. And then some of these are either in the early single digit or later single digit. The second row here is platforms on where you can stake it. Some are mobile, some are desktop, some are Chrome extensions or Firefox. These are safe, trusted platforms, although it's not financial advice if something goes wrong. When it comes to validator commissions, if you're using proof of stake, uh, make sure that you do not pay more than 10% if you're doing this manually. This is very important. And then for those who are starting still in crypto, let me move on the side a little bit. But um, here you can start off really easily if you want to test out Cosmos, Solana, and Terra. But for instance, Ethereum, it's asking a minimum of 32 ETH, which is a lot of money when you're new to the space. For those who are not new to the space and have been through this, of course, you may not mind 32 ETH or 120 DOT, but it's still a relative amount and not easily accessible to all. Lockup and unbonding is basically your liquidity, right? Once you want to withdraw and stop earning interest and maybe sell and get some gains, earn some gains, um, these are the different periods. So with ETH 2.0, it's a big issue because we have no defined date, right? It's indefinite for now. We don't know when the transition is going to happen. We have no clear goals as of today. And 
there are some that require like 28 days like polka dot but there's some that also are very fast solana is only 48 hours which is crazy right again i'm going to move 21 days for cosmos and then you here you have really good liquidity with cardano five days uh, polygon three to five days and binance seven days so hopefully this information will also be one of the key criteria when choosing which blockchains tokens to hold and earn interest on now just to do a summary guys hopefully you enjoyed this video please do comment like and do everything necessary so we can get this information out there and really provide clear facts over too many opinions and just people testing the air it's critical that we understand this. And again, this is a reminder of the framework, guys. Before choosing whatever solution, and this doesn't apply just to the top 20, but to choosing any blockchain coiner token, really have a look at what are the number of chains and apps, but also the quality of these chains and apps built on top of either the layer zero or layer one. Uh, what are the number of transactions relative to previous days, months, and years? Of course, always. Total value locked, how much money is actually on the chain? Uh, transactions per seconds and the fees do not trust the white papers do not trust the claims verify right it's that's a typical saying in crypto is do not trust verify uh, because a lot of these people tend to over over exaggerate you know the abilities of their technology uh, number of tokens supply, supply staked again believers long term market cap relative to ethereum what is the potential upside proof of stake apy yields because especially in a corrected or bearish market it's important that you accumulate as many tokens as possible to further build your wealth and of course the tokenomics the inflation rate which we saw earlier deflationary inflationary or fixed i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like and blast that bell notification to get access to more of these awesome videos a comment would be appreciated as well thank you so much guys see you every wednesday premiere at pc near you at o'clock gmt thank you so much see you next week guys What was that mini board? Oh yeah, all the facts, evidence, and on-chain statistics today are brought to you by CryptoSlate, Misari.io for tokenomics, and DeFi Llama, incredible resources, so check them out. Don't forget to download the Swissport Wealth app to buy and earn interest on your favorite cryptos. Yeah.